Hello everyone, this is Rig and today we are going to discuss about Jainism and Buddhism. Now this video has been made in accordance to the ICSE or CISCE board syllabus of class 6. However, if you are interested in history, if you are from any other board, you can definitely go through this video. This will help in your understanding of ancient Indian culture. So Jainism and Buddhism, these are two of the most important philosophies in ancient Indian history. They are the two most important religion in the world and they originated in roughly the same place at roughly the same period of time. Therefore, their differences, similarities and characteristics needs to be discussed in very detail. So without doing any delay, let's start. And as usual, please carry a notebook with you when you are going through this video. And at the end of this video, we will also discuss the various questions and answers which may come in your exam. So let's start. Factors behind the rise of Jainism and Buddhism. Why did suddenly two new religious philosophies appear in the context of ancient Indian history? Social structure and rigidity. The Varna system became rigid and hereditary, especially affecting the lower classes such as Vaishyas and Shudras who were subjected to strict customs and faced oppression and discrimination. So there was the Varna system in the Vedic culture, especially in the later Vedic culture. Previously, Varna system was a profession, was according to profession. The Varna of a person was attributed to that person according to the profession or the work they did. But later on, in the later Vedic times, Varna system became hereditary. Means, son of a Brahmin could only become Brahmin. No matter how much hard work a Shudra does or how much educated he or she becomes, that person will remain Shudra only. So, like that system came into being during the later Vedic age. And that was not liked by the lower classes, especially the Vaishyas and Shudras. And they had to live very strictly in Indian society and they faced discrimination and oppression from the upper classes. That is, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas treated the Vaishyas and Shudras very badly in the last part of the later Vedic age. Excessive Ritualism in the Vedic Religion The Vedic religion emphasized rituals and sacrifices, making religious practices complex and costly. This pushed people towards seeking simpler spiritual paths. So, the Vedic religion, as we have discussed in our last few videos, in detail about the Vedic religion, we have seen that they had many kind of sacrificial rituals, especially sacrifices like Rajasua or Ashwamedha. These things, these sacrifices or Vedic religious rituals were very costly and that it was not possible for every person to participate in these Vedic reli uh, religiousistic rituals because of the cost. Many things had to be done, many things had to be bought in order to do a ritual according to Vedic protocols. So that was very difficult for many people. Caste system. The upper classes looked down upon the lower classes, creating a social stratification. So there were layers in the society. And the upper classes, the upper caste in those layers treated the lower classes very badly. Jainism and Buddhism emerged at movements opposing the rigid caste structure, offering more inclusive beliefs. And in Jainism and Buddhism, there were no caste system or excessive rituals. So people became attracted to this kind of religions where such kind of elaborate rituals were not done. It was very simple and so people 
gave more attention to Jainism and Buddhism. So these were the factors behind the rise of two new religious philosophies in the Indian subcontinent. Introduction to Jainism. At first, we will discuss the characteristic features of Jainism. So in an introduction to Jainism, we will read about the founda foundational beliefs. Jainism was founded to promote non-violence, asceticism and strict ethical conduct. So non-violence, asceticism and strict ethical conduct was the main principle of Jainism. Non-violence means we will not hurt anyone and any kind of violent thoughts will not be encouraged in the religion and asceticism means a lifestyle of self-denial self-denial means we will not think about our own good we will not indulge in worldly pleasures often for the purpose of pursuing spiritual goals in order to have spiritual goals we will let go of our own desires so that is asceticism it emerged as a response to brahmanical supremacy and social inequalities so social inequities means the division of the society according to different caste and the supremacy of the Brahmanical practices. Jainism came as opposed to all those things. Therefore, the foundational belief of Jainism is to promote nonviolence and asceticism. Originated around 6th century BC alongside Buddhism, Jainism sought to reform society by challenging the established Vedic and Brahmanical order. So Jainism originated in 6th century BC. It was almost contemporary to Buddhism a bit earlier and Jainism, what was the purpose of Jainism? It was the reformation of society by challenging or by opposing the Vedic and Brahmanical order means division of society according to caste system and elaborate rituals. Influence Jainism became popular among the masses for its teachings on non-violence and rejection of elaborate rituals, focusing on individual responsibility for salvation. So Jainism made the people understand that in order to worship God, you don't need to make elaborate rituals or you don't need to divide the society according to caste system. And this kind of simple philosophy became very much attractive to the common people. Life of Mahavir. Now, Mahavir was one of the main organizers of Jainism. Early life. Mahavir was born in 599 BC in Kundagram, modern day Bihar. So the birthplace of Mahavir was in Kundagram and he was born in 599 BC. He belonged to the Kshatriya class and led a life of luxury during his early years. So during his early years, he led a life of luxury. He was from a very rich family and was born in Kundagram. Renunciation. At the age of 30, Mahavir renounced his princely life to seek truth and enlightenment. He practiced intense asceticism and wandered for years. So when he was 30 years of age, he thought that I need to find out the truth of this world. Why are everything alive? What do we need to do in order to be one with the God? All these things came in his thoughts. And so because of that, at the age of 30, he left everything and was seeking truth and enlightenment. He practiced intense asceticism, means he practiced intense meditation and he did not look at his own desires at all. And he wandered away for years. For years, he was searching for the truth. Mahavir observed a strict life, controlling his senses, 
practicing non attachment so he had control over all his senses means he led a very disciplined and balanced life and there was no attachment to any kind of worldly pleasures and eventually attending kevala omniscience kevala means omniscience all knowing knowledge of the whole world he attained the knowledge of the whole world after 12 years of meditation and austerity he began teaching his path afterwards so after 12 years of meditation and severe asceticism is called austerity he began preaching it he began teaching his path he gained the knowledge and then he began to teach his knowledge to other people teachings of mahavir who was mahavir and what did he teach the other people core teachings mahavir emphasized ahimsa non violence ahimsa means non violence satya satya means truthfulness asteya asteya means non stealing we will stay away from stealing it stealing does not mean materialistic stealing only it may mean stealing of thoughts or corruption we will stay away from any kind of corruption aparigraha aparigraha means not attaching oneself to any kind of desire we will not wish for something of our own that was the teaching of mahabir and brahmacharya means celibacy 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 means not indulging in family life so we will stay away from worldly pleasures we will practice virtues like satya asteya and aparigraha and that will be attained through the practice of celibacy means we will not att attach ourselves to any families five main principles the followers of jainism were expected to observe these principles rigorously what were they do not harm living beings so we will not harm any kind of living beings do not lie uh, staying away from false statements do not steal as we have discussed already renounce ownership we will not own any kind of property or material that was the teaching of mahavir practice chastity chastity means we will not indulge in family life we will live alone and our family will be the whole world path of self discipline mahavir taught liberation is achieved through self discipline meditation and ethical behavior without reliance on external rituals so mahavir taught the people that you don't need to conduct extensive rituals in order to liberate yourself from this world you need to have self discipline and meditation you don't need to conduct elaborate sacrificial rituals with a lot of money you just need to be disciplined enough and you will be able to be one with the god that was the teaching of mahavir through a path of self discipline split in jainism however jainism became divided into two what were those divisions formation of sects sects means different paths followed by different groups of people so after mahavir's death jainism split into two main sects digambar and swetambar so digambar and swetambar were the two main groups of jainism which became divided after the death of mahavir differences what were their differences divang digambar means the sky clad for uh, followers believed in complete nudity as a sign of renunciation so the followers of digambar's sect were, were sky clad sky clad means they believe the sky is our only covering hence we don't need to wear clothes in order to cover our body just like animals do not so in that way digambars believed in complete nudity means without any cloth and that will be the sign of renunciation that will be the ultimate sacrifice you pay for letting everything go 
Swetamvar. Swetamvar means they will be white clad. They will uh, dress up in white color. And the followers of Swetamvar wore simple white clothes. Philosophical divergence. Both sects followed the same core beliefs but differed in ritual practices, attire and interpretations of Mahabir's teachings. Now, both of them followed in the same core principles but they had minor differences which they followed in their teachings or in their livelihood. Just like the Gamvar did not wear any clothes and Swetambar people wore simple white clothes. Now, where did Jainism spread and how did it spread? Regional expansion. Jainism spread across India, especially in regions like Magadh, Koshala and Kosambi, supported by royal patronage. Royal patronage means royal sponsorship. The kings of these area supported Jainism and that is why it spread in the regions like Magadh, Koshala and Koshambi. Means in these regions the kings were in favor of Jainism. Therefore it spread primarily in northern India. Appeal to the masses. Its simplicity and rejection of caste distinctions attracted many followers. So, because it was a very simple religion and did not have any divisions based on caste, therefore, people loved this religion in the beginning. And so, many followers were there of Jainism. Mahavira's disciples traveled widely to spread his teachings. So, the disciples of Mahavir, they traveled in far away places and taught the people regarding what Mahavir said. Influence on culture. Jain teachings on non-violence influenced societal norms and Jain monks contributed to art, architecture, literature in Prakrit making Jainism accessible to a wider population. So, people in those times used to speak a language called Prakrit. And if someone comes and explains things easily in your own language, then obviously you will understand it better. Such was the condition of Jainism. The literature was in Prakrit, means people could understand the teachings of Mahavir. Hence, it spread through a huge area and it had its contribution in art and architecture also because many people started following Jainism. Now, impact of Jainism. What was the result of Jainism being followed by people? How did it impact the society? Literature. Early Jains promoted their teachings in Prakrit, facilitating a shift away from Sanskrit and contributing to regional literature. So, in our last videos about the Vedic ages, we have seen that people used to read and recite the mantras in Sanskrit. However, most of the people did not know the language Sanskrit. Hence, they themselves did not know what they were saying. But in case of Jainism, their teachings was promoted in the language of Prakrit. And lot of people or almost all the people knew the Prakrit language and thus people could understand the teachings of Jainism. Architecture. Jain art and architecture exemplified by the Dilwara temples in on Mount Abu flourished under royal patronage and merchant support. So, the merchants means the traders or the businessmen of those times along with the kings patronized the Dilwara temples. Dilwara temples are group of temples on the place called Mount Abu in Rajasthan. So, if you go there, you will see how beautifully the Jain art and architecture is uh, seen through the help of building beautiful temples. 
social welfare jain monks were active in social welfare activities setting up hospitals and educational institutions so the jain monks did not always preach religion they tried to help the society or they tried to improve the society with welfare activities like educational institutions like schools or they sometimes even set up hospitals ethical influence ethical means influence on discipline and morality of people jainism emphasizes on non violence environmental respect and self restraint influenced indian society profoundly so jainism emphasized on non violence and jainism taught people how to respect the environment and also they taught self restraint self restraint means self control so all these things are still followed in indian society now introduction to buddhism who was lord buddha and how was buddhism or what are the characteristics features of buddhism founding buddhism was founded by siddhartha gautama known as the buddha who sought to address human suffering through a path of moderation and ethical living so the aim of siddhartha gautama was to teach the people or to address the human suffering humans used to suffer a lot and he taught the people that through a path of moderation and morality through discipline and moral knowledge you can get rid of your suffering so that was the teaching of siddhartha gautama who later came to be known as buddha teachings buddhism offered practical approach to life emphasizing compassion meditation and ethical behavior so buddhism was a very practical approach to life and it emphasized on compassion compassion means kindness meditation meditation means you know indulging in spiritual thoughts and ethical behavior ethical behavior means not to do anything wrong while dealing with life so all these things were taught by buddhism philosophical opposition buddhism also like jainism rejected the authority of the vedas and brahmanical rituals promoting a more accessible spiritual path so all the brahmanical systems especially the systems taught in vedas where ritual was given very much importance all those things were discarded or opposed by buddhism great renunciation great renunciation means living worldly pleasures early life born in 567 bc as a prince siddhartha he lived a sheltered life of luxury his father shielded him from life's hardship so uh, buddha was born in 567 bc and he was the prince he was a prince of a great kingdom so and he lived a very sheltered life sheltered life means life where there was no problem at all and there were plenty of luxuries he was very rich and he lived a life of luxury his father was very protective of him and his father make made him stay away from all kinds of hardships means he did not have to struggle at all in life encounters with suffering siddhartha saw an old man a sick person a dead body and a medicant which deeply affected him so one day siddhartha went away in a wandering in his kingdom and there he saw four important things what are they he saw an old man okay an old man who were who was becoming totally humped means who couldn't even walk properly like that an old man was seen by 
uh, by Buddha and he saw another sick person who was very ill he saw a dead body and then he saw a mendicant mendicant means a person who is totally free of the worldly pleasures so who is given to begging who lives a life by begging stuffs from other people and that attracted him deeply because that man is free from all the suffering renunciation at the age of 29 he left his home to seek answers to life's suffering marking the great renunciation so at the age of 29 just like mahabir he also became influenced by the power of truth and the importance of seeking the truth so he left his home in order to seek answers for the suffering in human life and that is the great renunciation renunciation means giving up all the luxuries first sermon first sermon means first teaching setting buddha delivered his first sermon at sarnath called the Dharma Chakra Prabhatana Sutta or the turning of the wheel of Dharma. Dharma here means righteousness. Dharma does not mean religion as people translate in English. It is a wrong translation. Dharma in Indian context means righteousness. Living life according to moral laws and discipline that is called dharma so turning the wheel of dharma means starting the life of dharma hence through the first sermon at a place called sarnath he delivered or he started to live a life of dhamma or he started to teach the society how to follow righteousness and that is called dharma chakra pavartana sutra and it translates to turning the wheel of dharma means starting of dharma in the society he taught the four noble truths and the eightfold path as a means to overcome suffering so in order to overcome suffering in order to get rid of all your bad things you must follow four noble truths and that four noble truth can be attained by following the eightfold path and thus you will get rid of your suffering beginning of sangh his first sermon led the foundation of the sangh or buddhist monastic community just like uh, christians have convent buddhists have sangh so sangh means a group where uh, a system of uh, where the monks lived their life so it is the beginning of buddhist monastic community and his teachings spread rapidly these monks followed the principles of buddhism and they traveled far and wide to deliver the teachings of buddha so thus beginning of sangh happened with the first sermon four noble truths and the eightfold path so these are the main teachings of lord buddha that is the four noble truths and the eightfold path so what are the four noble truths life is full of suffering according to buddha life is full of suffering there is only suffering in life that was the buddhist philosophy suffering is caused by desire if you expect something to happen and that does not happen then you will feel sad or you will suffer so suffering is caused by expectations or suffering is caused by desire suffering can be overcome and we can get rid of this suffering how can we get rid of suffering to overcome the suffering is through the eightfold path so suffering is the ultimate truth the world is filled with suffering and suffering is caused because we expect something to happen suffering can be got ridden off 
and how to get rid of suffering how to overcome suffering that is through eightfold path so what is eightfold path eightfold path are basically eight rules that one should follow in life and that person will not have suffering so right view right view means viewing the world correctly right intention means your intent must be pure whatever you want to do in life it must be a good thing right speech right speech means we will always speak good things right action right action means we will do the right kind of jobs we will do the actual right thing the pure thing in order to live our life livelihood livelihood means the occupation that we will do must be good effort means we will give our hard work for something good we will study well we will follow we will work very hard so all these things uh, are effort mindfulness means we will be aware of our surroundings and meditation means spiritual beliefs you must believe in spirituality so it is a practical guide to ethical and mental development leading to liberation so with all these things you will be guided towards liberation liberation means you will become one with the divine so these are the four noble truths and how to attain them through the eightfold path now code of conduct for followers buddha gave a manual which his followers should follow in order to lead their life five precepts so five uh, five precepts are there which means five rules which every follower of buddhist philosophy should follow and what are they do not kill we will not kill any animals we will not kill any life and do not steal do not steal means we will not take anything from anyone avoid false speech abstain from intoxicants absence abstain from intoxicants means we will not do any kind of addictions we will not indulge ourselves in any kind of poisonous thoughts and also we will not do anything bad in our life that is to avoid improper conduct now moral discipline followers were expected to live a life of moral integrity you may not have money in your life you may not have anything in your life but discipline should always be there that was the core belief of buddhism and it meant avoiding corruption and maintaining a virtuous character so corruption should be avoided and one should have a very well disciplined virtuous character filled with good qualities so that was the five precepts which the uh, followers of buddhism were supposed to follow along with the moral discipline non violence karma and nirvana so these are very important things in ancient indian philosophy and they are non violence karma and nirvana now what are the meanings of these three things non violence like jainism buddhism emphasized in ahimsa non violence means we will not do any kind of violent activities and violent activities does not necessarily mean physical activities we will not have bad thoughts also thinking something bad is also violence according to buddhism and jainism so we will not practice any kind of violence and that is extreme ahimsa karma buddha taught that actions shape future outcomes guiding ethical behavior so we will do good deeds in life doing deeds in life is karma so our karma may, will be something good and because of doing the good things in life we will have good outcomes our result will be very good and that is guiding through ethical behavior 
nirvana nirvana means the ultimate goal of buddhism and that is the cessation of desire when we will not have any expectations at all so that is the cessation of desire means the end of desire and when we will not have any kind of desire then we will be free from the cycle of birth and rebirth means when we have let go of all our desires then when we die after that when we die we will not take birth again we will be one with the divine we will stay with the gods and that is nirvana means to become one with the divine with good works in your life so that was the principle of non violence karma and nirvana spread of buddhism where did the thoughts of buddha spread widespread influence buddhism spread to central asia sri lanka china and beyond aided by missionary work and royal support so the royal uh, buddhism had a lot of royal supporters means kings of the region supported buddhism hence it spread to areas like central asia sri lanka china Sri Lanka and China still has a lot of Buddhist elements in their culture, uh, in their culture, and beyond. And this happened because the Buddhist monks used to travel far away places in order to teach people regarding the philosophies of Buddhism. Use of local language. Buddhist teachings in Pali made them accessible to common people. So just like Jainism, in Jainism philosophy, people preached in Prakrit language. Buddhist teachings were made in Pali language, and Pali language was understood by most people. Hence, common people understood the teachings of Buddha, and they became attracted towards it. art and architecture monasteries and stupas became centers of learning and culture so stupas and monasteries are architectural achievements of buddhism different monasteries used to be built so that monks can live their life peacefully so those centers and stupas are where relics of buddha are kept relics means parts of physical parts of buddhas are kept so stupas and monasteries became very important centers of learning and the stupas and monasteries used to be constructed in a very beautiful way that was the contribution of buddhism to art and architecture split in buddhism so there were differences between the people in buddhist culture hence there was also a split in buddhism hinayana and mahayana after buddhist death after buddha's death buddhism divided into hinayana and mahayana or theravadins and sthaviravadins so hinayanas and mahayanas are two different categories of buddhist people who follow different kinds of buddhism even though their core beliefs are same so hinayana people follow the original teachings of buddhism and mahayana people follow devotional practices regarding buddhism differences what are the differences hinayana emphasized on strict adherence to buddha's teachings so hinayana philosophy focuses on strict discipline and strict maintenance of buddha's teachings while mahayana introduced devotional elements means they introduced policies to worship buddha considering buddha as a divine figure they consider buddha to be a god mahayana people consider buddha to be a god and they believe in worshiping of buddha whereas hinayana people they believe that we don't need to worship buddha we will follow the things what buddha said very strictly so that was the difference between hinayana and mahayana decline of buddhism why and how did buddhism decline in the indian subcontinent 
integration with hinduism the rise of hinduism and similar practices led to a decline in buddhist influence in india so once again after the death of mahavir and buddha the people started following hinduism so there was a rise in hinduism previously there was hinduism then mahavir and buddha came and suddenly there was a rise in jainism and buddhism after them again there was a rise in hinduism so this led to the decrease of buddhism or this led to the decline of buddhism corruption buddhist monasteries became corrupt over time losing public support so people used to love buddhism because of its simplistic views however over time the monasteries or the sangh or the monastic order where the monks used to live those institutions became corrupted and thus people did not love them anymore competition from brahmanical revival there was a revival in of hinduism so there was more support for vedic practices and integration of buddhist ideas into hinduism contributed to its decline so all the ideas of buddhism were included in hinduism also and therefore buddhism as a religion began to decline with the rise of hinduism where hinduism itself had several Uh, several teachings of buddha incorporated into itself impact of buddhism now what was the impact of buddhism how did how much influence did buddhism have in the indian society literature the tripitaka and the jataka tales enriched indian and buddhist literature so tripitakas are the teachings of buddha and jataka tales are stories regarding previous births of buddha so all these tales are very important in indian literature not only in buddhist literature but also in indian literature people from other religion also follow the jataka tales and they are uh, always impressed by the teachings of buddha art and architecture buddhist art influenced indian and southeast asian culture evident in structures like ajanta and ellora caves so ajanta and ellora caves are very good examples of how beautiful a cave can be or how beautiful architecture can be and that was the contribution of buddhism in the field of art and architecture ethics and society buddhism's emphasis on compassion equality and non-violence had a lasting impact on indian social and ethical values so indian people are believed to be very peaceful people and one of the main reason for that is because of the teachings of buddha so buddhism's philosophy was based on compassion which means kindness equality means all the society will be united and there are no differences between people and non violence non violence means we don't harm anyone so all these philosophies are still existent in the indian society and that is what makes us unique as a culture now we will go through the similarities between jainism and buddhism origins and reform both emerged in the 6th century bc as reformist movements opposing vedic rituals caste restrictions and emphasizing ethics over ritualism so there were vedic rituals which were very expensive caste systems were there where society was divided into different kinds of people and also there was a lot of ritualistic protocols or systems which used to be followed for religion so all these things were opposed by buddhism and jainism so both originated as a reformist movement 
non-violence. Both promote ahimsa non-violence as a core principle encouraging compassion for all living beings. So both follow the system of ahimsa or non-violence where it means that we will be kind towards other living creatures. Self-discipline and meditation. Emphasis on self-discipline and meditation and ethical conduct as paths of enlightenment. So in order to become enlightened or in order to have omniscience means knowledge of the whole world, you must be very disciplined, you must have spiritual goals. So that was the similarity between Jainism and Buddhism. Karma and rebirth means belief in karma and sansar with liberation as the ultimate goal. So both believe that if you do good deeds in your life, after you die, you will stay with the gods. So that was the concept of karma and rebirth. Rebirth means after you leave the body, your soul takes birth again in another body. So both these concepts were there in both Jainism and Buddhism. Monastic community. Both established monastic communities for dedicated followers and offered paths for lay practitioners. Lay practitioners means people who are not monks but followers of Jainism or Buddhism. So they had monastic communities where monks were there who used to spread their teachings and along with that they used to have normal followers also. So these were the similarities between Buddhism and Jainism. Now we will go through the differences. So what are the main differences between the two religions? Concept of soul or Atman. What is soul? According to Jainism, they believe soul is eternal. Eternal means soul can never be destroyed. And soul is translated to jiva in uh, Jainism philosophy. Buddhism rejects the concept of permanent soul, anatman. So according to Buddhism, soul is not permanent. It can end and it has been referred to as anatman. Path to liberation, how to liberate oneself. Jainism follows very strict ascetic practices, whereas Buddhism follows the middle path, means avoiding extremes. We will not indulge in too much luxury, but along with that, we will also not practice severe asceticism. Goal. What are the goals or motives of the two religions? Jainism According to Jainism, moksha is the ultimate goal, which means purification of soul. Whereas, according to Buddhism, nirvana is the ultimate goal, which means re realization of non-self. Means there is a world outside your own self. And realizing that means nirvana. Scriptures. What are the texts available? Jainism, for Jainism, Agamas are the text where the philosophy of Jainism has been explained and they are in the language Prakrit. However, Buddhism has Tripitakas and Sutras which are explained in Pali and Sanskrit language. Spread. How much did both the religions spread. Jainism remained largely in India. Even now, Jainism is mostly practiced in some parts of India only. However, Buddhism spread across Asia, influencing various cultures. So, Buddhism spread across Asia and it influenced a lot of cultures. Now, we will go through important questions and answers which may come in your exam. What factors led to the rise of Jainism and Buddhism in ancient India? Factors included the rigid caste system, dissatisfaction with Vedic rituals and the desire for a simpler ethical life. People sought religious paths that were more inclusive and promoted social equality. Who was the founder of Jainism and what was his title? Jainism was founded by Mahavir who is regarded as the 24th 
तीर्थंकर डिस्क्राइब द अर्ली लाइफ ऑफ महावीर महावीर वॉज बॉर्न इन अ रॉयल क्षत्रिय फैमिली इन 599 हंड्रेड एंड नाइंटी नाइन बी सी ही रिनाउंसड हिज कम्फर्टेबल लाइफ एट द एज ऑफ थर्टी टू सीक स्पिरिचुअल ट्रूथ एंड प्रैक्टिस्ड इंटेंस एसिटिसिजम वॉट आर द कोर टीचिंग्स ऑफ महावीर इन जैनिज्म महावीरस टीचिंग्स फोकस्ड ऑन अहिंसा नॉन वायलेंस सत्य ट्रूथफुलनेस अस्थेय नॉन स्टीलिंग एंड अपरिग्रह नॉन अटैचमेंट एंड ऑल्सो ब्रह्मचार्य सेलिबेसी वॉट आर द टू मेन सेक्ट्स ऑफ जैनिज्म एंड वॉट आर देयर डिफरेंसेस द टू मेन सेक्ट्स आर दिगंबर स्काई क्लैड एडवोकेटिंग न्यूडिटी एंड श्वेतांबर व्हाइट क्लैड wearing white robes they differ in dress and some ritual practices how did jainism spread and which regions did it influence jainism spread through the efforts of monks and royal patronage especially in magadh and western india impacting art literature and culture in these regions what is the ultimate goal in jainism how is it achieved the ultimate goal is moksha or liberation achieved through self discipline non attachment and ethical living to purify the soul who founded buddhism and what led him to seek enlightenment buddhism was founded by siddhartha gautama the buddha his encounters with suffering led him to renounce his royal life and seek answers to human suffering what is the significance of the great renunciation in buddhism the great renunciation refers to buddha living his luxurious life to live as an ascetic marking his commitment to understanding and overcoming human suffering where did buddha give his first sermon and what is it called buddha gave his first sermon at sarnath known as the dharma chakra pavartana sutta mean meaning turning of the wheel of dharma what are the four noble truths in buddhism the four noble truths are life is full of suffering suffering is caused by desire suffering can be overcome and the way to overcome it is through the eightfold path what does the eightfold path in buddhism entail the eightfold path includes right view intention speech action livelihood effort mindfulness and concentration guiding ethical and mental development what is ahimsa and why is it important in both jainism and buddhism ahimsa means non violence it is central to both religions emphasizing compassion and respect for all living beings guiding ethical behavior what is karma in the context of jainism and buddhism karma is the concept that actions have consequences affecting future lives good actions lead to positive outcomes while harmful actions lead to suffering how did buddhism spread beyond india and which regions did it reach buddhism spread through missionary work and royal support to regions like sri lanka southeast asia central asia china japan influencing local cultures what are the main differences between hinayana and mahayana buddhism hinayana theravadins focus on strict adherence to 
Buddha's teachings, while Mahayana incorporates devotional practices and views Buddha as a divine figure. Why did Buddha, Buddhism decline in India? Buddhism declined due to Hindu revival, lack of royal patronage and the absorption of Buddhist principles into Hindu practices, making it less distinct. List some similarities between Jainism and Buddhism. Both reject Vedic rituals, emphasize non-violence and self-discipline, believe in karma and rebirth, and have established monastic communities. How do Jainism and Buddhism differ in their views of the soul? Jainism believes in an eternal soul, Jiva, while Buddhism denies the existence of a permanent soul, Anatman. What impact did Jainism and Buddhism have on Indian culture and society? Both religions promoted social equality, non-violence, influenced Indian art and literature, and provided alternatives to caste-based Vedic practices. So we have discussed in detail about Buddhism and Jainism. Hope you have liked the video. And even though this video is for class 6 ICSC student, anyone can go through it if you have an interest in ancient Indian history. In this channel, I make videos regarding ancient Indian histories also. So if you are interested, please go through them as well. Thank you so much for your love and support.